Hello, good afternoon, please acknowledge if you hear me. Good afternoon. I'm audible now. Okay. Give me two minutes. It's like uh, to start. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, but he can. Okay, I hope the recording is started. Yes. So uh, today we have a very special guest uh, with us. So let me introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Ravinder Singh. He is a young socialist, sociologist, and a faculty in the Department of Sociology, GLDM Government Degree College, Hiranagar. Department of Higher Education, Jammu and Kashmir. Previously, he has taught uh, at Ansal University, Gurugram, and uh, Asian Law College, Noida, as an assistant professor. He has completed his uh, Master's of Philosophy and uh, Doctor of Philosophy in, uh, in uh, Sociology from one of the premier institutions of India, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. So Dr. Singh has more than five years of research and teaching experience. He has uh, numerous research uh, publications and paper presentations to his credit. And uh, many of his papers has been published in uh, reputed research journals and edited books. Recently, one of his research papers has been published by Springer in 2021 and uh, one edited book titled Social Problems and Issues in India published by Satyam La International in 2023. So today, uh, sir is going to uh, talk about the very important and uh, the foremost topic that uh, we are going to discuss that for the ages, epistemology and philosophy, uh, history and sociology. So he will be taking you from the history to the present. So. Let me, uh, sir, Ravinder, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for 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 nice introduction, sir. And uh, I think uh, sir, I'm audible. Uh, audible. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, sir. Everyone you are audible. Present here. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. So basically, uh, the main reason behind choosing this uh, topic is because uh, philosophy as well as as well as epistemology uh, becomes one of the most important or significant for anyone who is uh, not just part of the territory but also across the world now indian civilization we're talking about indian civilization mesopotamian so we should be clear with that also because somewhere civilizational history it can be cultural civilization it can be economic civilization or it can be society in general with reference to civilization so therefore the topic covers everything from you know from the civilization part to to 21st century in fact 2023 so i will show you the ppt because this is we are having online session right now and therefore ppt will help you to understand what we are going to discuss and uh, <clears throat> i hope you will enjoy the session because uh, if you look at the offline to online mode uh, uh, many webinars were held during covid 19 pandemic and uh, there was a culture of you know webinars every day and uh, somehow you know i am not you going know, to webinar, i'm not going to go to session in this session but, but i'm going to you know discuss the kind of knowledge that india have since decades uh, the kind of knowledge becomes very important for each one of you not just you are studying economics and this kind of webinars you know uh, how this webinar will be relevant for you but in general might be some of you might be competing for competitive examinations or some like some something like that. So such webinars, you know, such topics uh, becomes very important. So I'm going to show you the PPT, show you the you know PPT, and through PPT we will discuss what we are going to do in the session. I hope I'm audible. Again, I'm asking each one of you, I'm audible or not?
Yes, sir. You are audible. Audible. <coughs> so, <coughs> look at the screen. First, we have to understand the title. Because title becomes uh, one of the most important things. Whenever we investigate, yes, we understand. Is not with the... What, sir? Your what screen is not visible. Screen no, is not visible. Visible PPT. Screen. Yes, PPT is not visible. Not visible. OK, just just a minute. Just a minute. Again, I'm going to show it. This is going on. Now, OK, fine. Dr. Power. Yeah, it is OK. Yeah, no, it's fine. visible. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, right now. Right now. Is this fine? Shall we start? Yes, sir. You can start. Okay, okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you so much, you know, Dr. Pawan, for the invitation as well as uh, for giving me this opportunity to, you know, interact with your, you know, students out there with creative minds like economic minds. So first uh, students, but look at the title and uh, understand the title. What is the title and what's the meaning of the title? That is India through the ages. Meaning we're talking about the different types of civilization. In fact, before prehistoric times, we will discuss in this particular session. And also like uh, what were, you know, if you ancient India, medieval in the modern India, that will be part of the discussion, but also we will go back to the pre time to Sarasvati civilization. In fact, in the Sarasvati civilization, we will touch upon, but also we will go back to the Sarasvati civilization also. So philosophy, epistemology, history, and sociology. <coughs> and uh, being a student of, uh, you know, economics, we should ask, sir, where is economics? And uh, if, if I, you know, we are having a social setup. If you understand Indian society, so Indian society since decades, we are having a kind of, you know, a system uh, where we are talking about the contributions made by different institutions. It can be family, marriage, religion. economy is considered as one of the most important institutions in 21st century. And also, if you look at uh, Kotalia's Art Shastra also, where he has discussed about so many things with reference to economy, with re reference to, you know, the kind of Dandaniti that I think you, know, you might have. So economics becomes part and parcel of society, part and parcel of life. So economic growth of any particular nation becomes very important for the overall development of any particular nation. So you are, you are that particular economic perspective also comes under this is uh, started in Bombay University by Professor G.S. Gure. He is considered as the founder of sociology. So there is a there is a you know great relationship between between you know economics and sociology. And in fact, in sociology, there is there is one sub discipline we call it economics also. And there are different sociological thinkers like Max Weber, Karl Marx. I think you might have Karl Marx also. Adam Smith, you consider as the founder of economics. And later on in India also, Kotalia Arthasthar also, you consider as, as something very much relevant for, 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 you know, for Indian context. So sociology, within sociology, there is economic sociology. There are different sociological thinkers, both from West and India. And uh, these thinkers somewhere, they have discussed about the, the economics the various kinds of relationships with other social institutions like economic and religion, eco economy and family. So economy becomes one of the most important aspect of social sociology. <laughs> so, so first I want to make you clear about what we are going to do in this particular session. So there are six points that uh, we are going to discuss one by one. So the number one is to understand the philosophy and epistemology of India or Bharat. So if you look at those, there are three terms which becomes very important to understand. So what is India, what is Bharat, what is Hindustan? 
how these terms came into existence and what was the you know reasons or or, or circumstances so that we will discuss epistemologies in simple terms means we talk theory of concepts second objective is to discuss the history and civilization of india that becomes very important so if you look at your your history books so always you start from indus valley civilization so little bit we will go back to the the, the previous civilization of india that is under investigation and there are many scholars in india or researchers in india they are conducting research on indus valley civilization number 3 to understand india and its economy culture and policy in different phases of history that also becomes very important for you being being student of economics you this particular third objective becomes very important for you we will discuss some gdp and uh, discussed by some 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 scholars a uh, uh, global recognized scholar and that i will show you number 4 to discuss indian law and and the judiciary you remember one thing uh, you might be aware of also uh, post 1950 when the constitution of india came into existence on 26th of jan 1950 or when dr b ambedkar was the chairman of the uh, commission and the week for economic growth so therefore uh, objective number 4 why i have chosen why i'm i am going to discuss subject number 4 you should be clear with the indian judiciary indian law also if you are studying studying economics you should be clear with the reforms with reference to law that becomes very important also whenever we are discussing about any reformation for example after 19 when there are can discuss like with reference to agriculture with reference to education with reference to rural social uh, infrastructure or whatever so all such things becomes very important but but how does this happen due to due to indian law due to indian judiciary so that i will discuss more in detail number 5 to conceptualize how sociology looks at indian society i already already told you sociology of india or sociology in general becomes very important for you because analysis becomes very important whenever you are making any economic analysis also then society is the base so to understand that base you should be clear with the social come to number 1 india <coughs> if uh, so they should be this we are answer so actually the country in south asia is the country by area with a total area of approximately 3.2 million square kilometers the most populous country as of first may 2023 was the suppression of china also now india is the most populous country in the world so we are having the biggest democracy in the world also if you look at the constitution it's the most populous country in the world you compare india with the, with the rest of the world it's a secular it has to have been a secular as a word in the constitution of india the part of jain nation and there was going to be to 1977 emergency in, in, in the country and on part of jain nation or socialist is both words in in so please uh 
this is the type of data which you should be clear and uh, at the surface. on the surface. On the of the Pakistan, Nepal, and the India is in the it's on the Mount and Nicobar Islands, Shere Matan border and Thailand with Thailand, Myanmar and Indonesia. So this is just a kind of, you know, if you look at this, you know, map also, you will find that the surrounding nation or neighboring countries of India. Collectively, they were working together. They were, you know, uh, doing many kinds of trades also. That becomes very interesting to understand present Indian economy. So number one objective to understand the philosophy and epistemology of Indian Bharat, I'm going to discuss this also, epistemology. So epistemology, I told you already, it's the theory of construction, but what is etymology? Etymology deals with the study of any particular word and uh, it, you know, locates that particular word in a particular socio-cultural context. For example, if I ask you, uh, what is the etymology of economics? So you should be clear with that also. From where economics came into existence? What is the Greek meaning? Because already, always, always we discuss etymology with reference to Greek as well as Latin civilization. But there were, there were, there were civilization in India also search for the civilization. I already told you. This particular civilization also becomes important because there were many Sanskritic uh, uh, words, for example, caste. If you look at caste also, the caste word has been derived from Portuguese word casta. So the first person came to India was Vasco de Gama, 1498. You should be clear with that also. But if you look at caste in India, we call it Varn, Varna system, Brahman Shatri Vichyoda. That also becomes very important to understand, to, to understand the social structure of India. So according to Oxford English Dictionary, the name India is derived from classic, classical Latin India. What is Latin basically? Ancient language of Rome. Please remember. A reference to South Asia and an uncertain region to its east and in turn derived Greek India, ancient Greek Indos, old Persian Hindus. So these are the names which you remember, like the Sanskrit Sindhu or river, you know, specifically the Indus river. Or by implication, it's well settled southern basin. The ancient Greeks referred to the Indians as Indoi, which translates as people of Indus. So I will discuss, I will not I will not read from the PPT. I will show you just the PPT, but I will discuss with you. So please remember, keep in your mind, there are three India. I already told you there are history, there are also Hindustan with reference to Mughal Empire. If you look at your constitution, clearly mentioned India is Bharat. And, uh, is the union of states and a fusion of various religions, cultures, customs, heritage, etc. So if I ask you to, 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 to explain the meaning of the word Indian society, why you call India as a plural nation? Because many ethnic communities, immigrants, they came to India uh, in different places of history. If you read your and I'm sure that most of you might, um, might be clear with there is a great history of India. To India, the settled in India, and the Indian Indian culture, they accommodated different types of diversity. So therefore, we're talking about plural nation, where we are having different types of diversity, different types of ethnic groups, uh, you know, which reside in India. So, which makes each and each nation em embracing the diversity of the world. Since times, our nation has been termed as Bharat. Bharat, please remember, Sanskrit original name. There are some stories of various historians which fascinate us and explain how India got in and Bharat. So that is very interesting to understand how Bharat as a word came into existence. What are the different stories? So there is one story of land of Samar rivers, the Rigveda, 18 Hymans of Samar group. There also you can discuss about, you know, uh, you can find reference of Bharat. Another is from, you know, the Bharat. 
he was he was a team. So we name Bharat with reference to that also. So there are certain references where we trace the roots of Bharat. So therefore, Bharat is somewhere, and you know, old historical. You can find Bharat, the, the mentioning of Bharat in various uh, religious uh, texts also. So therefore, Bharat is more you know uh, older than India as well as Hindustan. So Indian philosophy and epistemology. Little bit I will discuss with you. <coughs> then I will come 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 to the final you know most important debates. So Indian philosophy refers to the philosophical relation of Indian subcontinent. A traditional Hindu classification divides Astic and Nastic. So there was a, a kind of you know uh, uh, schools, different schools of philosophy, and uh, depending on one of the it believes the Vedas as a valid source of knowledge, whether the school believes in the premises of Brahman and Atman, and whether the school believes in the afterlife and this. Please remember, Indian philosophy also becomes very important to study economics in India. Please. Uh, Indian philosophy, uh, you know, gives you more deeper un understanding of the, the present in economics also. Then we are having six major schools of Vedic philosophy that is very important to understand. Nyaya. Then we are talking about Vishishka, Samakya, Vedanta. So these are six, which you know, uh, you know, uh, knowledge with reference to India, with reference to different types of you know, uh, things with reference to Indian society. So five major heterodox Samanic schools: Jain, Buddhist, Advika, Ajna. And Jarvak. So, however, there are other methods of classification that we call as, you know, uh, Vidya Varna, for instance, identifies six schools of Indian philosophy by including those that belong to this Shev and uh, we're talking about uh, Rasivara traditions. So, these are, you know, some kind of like if you look at Indian philosophy, we are having Dharma, Karma, Samsara, Dukha, renunciation, meditation, Dukha, Samsara, Moksha, Nirvana in, you know, uh, Means which we're talking about uh, liberation, moksha. So remember one thing: <coughs> these all kind, this 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 kind of philosophy somewhere you know uh, becomes very important uh, to understand the Indian culture, the Indian economy in the present times. Remember what we learned from Indian philosophy. Remember one thing: because if you look at Indian Indian economy during Uh, very important for the rest of the world. They wanted to understand the Indian diversity, the Indian culture, the Indian philosophy, the Indian schools, the Indian Vedas, Shastras, or Puranas, or something like that. So they are having different phases that that will be part of this Indian history. Come to the Indian history, ancient medieval modern. Please keep in your mind. When you look at Indian history, we are having three parts: ancient, medieval, modern. Each one of you, I'm, I'm sure, you are clear with this because this is these are very common words. So, if you look at ancient, you know, history, we're talking about 6000 BC to 700 AD. Clear? To 700 means we're talking about Paleolithic period, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Neolithic, then Iron Age, Mauryan Empire, post-modern kingdoms, Gupta Empire. Gupta kingdom post Gupta period. So please remember, we are having, uh, uh, you know, before Indus Valley civilization, there was Saraswati civilization that was very important, a prominent civilization of India. And there are different scholars in India. They are conducting research on this particular civilization because this civilization, uh, you know, gives us some kind of identity. Because if you look at Mesopotamian. Egyptian or rest civilization across the world. So Indian civilization is also one of the oldest civilization when we compare India with the world. But India is rich in terms of cultural capital, clear knowledge capital, and economic capital. So civilization becomes very important to understand the Indian economy. So these were the stages which you which you go through, like uh, beginning of Iron Age, Indus civilization, where we discuss about uh, discuss about Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, the important urban sites of India. So whenever we understand urban sociology or urban economics, we always go back to Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. <clears throat> yeah, what do you know why? Because there was a kind of you know proper planning, there was a kind of proper system, 
there was a uh, you know governance model out there there was a policy of trade so remember this also so harappa and mohenjo uh, daro uh, you know sites becomes very important for us like lothal in gujarat also these sites also becomes very important when we have to understand the trade policy of india the trade system of india and therefore please remember urban society so urban हेलो हेलो सर सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल यस सर रविंदर सर 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 की आवाज नहीं आ रही ओके मैं एक बार कॉल करता हूँ
there was some network uh, problem so sir is rejoining okay sir 2 minute wait kar lo okay sir वेलकम बैक सर आई होप देयर वाज सम नेटवर्क इशू नाउ यू कैन शेयर योर पीपीटी एंड यू कैन प्रोसीड यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल बट I hope the screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. now it is visible and you are audible. You can now proceed. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
let's wait. Uh, not visible let to me. I don't. Let, 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 let yes, yes. It is visible now. It's visible now. It is visible now. Yeah, you can proceed. Continue. Okay. It is about our thing you uh, because I, I, I already discussed this particular you know, portion of this particular you know. In you one particular reference, there was a professor and this medicine and British professor at the University of Netherlands and called it fellow at Cambridge University. So I was trying to, you know, what was the world, you know, economy, what was India's wealth related to the world GDP for years? He was comparing in different periods of history. And according to him, in year, you know, in China, just you know, India, world total. So this was the kind of graph. Paid and he's giving us some kind of estimate. This was the you know GDP in millions of international dollars in India because remember one thing, India having rich rich culture as well as diversity. Uh, that I will discuss. Uh, so the British Imperial Empire began began to grow in India in the middle of the 18th century, the phase of decline Indian history set. So that's one thing which I want to discuss with you. Come to the Indian judiciary and law. So if you look at legal system of ancient India, there was legal legal system of ancient India also, like Sutras, Vedas, Dharan Shastra, Samasamriti, Varna and Ashrama, Shastras, religion means talking dharam and dharam means to literature, it means nothing about social order, not religion. Because religion means different social institutions, anti Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Jainism, or whatever. Understand the process of society, and uh, therefore, dharam is not something related to the beliefs and rituals. Dharma is related to the social order of the society. So, interesting to understand the mechanism also. And uh, for the first time, the chief judge was appointed by the native Modern India, we understand British India. It is social education came into the sense. Later on, uh, uh, so Indian wants on the century Law already you know, law is a general rule of human behavior in the state. Aliens living in the territory of the state are also bound by the law of the state. Remember, so there is a there is a deep relationship between economics, economics, economics and law. If you look at different agencies constituted by government of India, looks to the income tax part of India, it can be excise department, it can be enforcement directed. It can be like Central Bureau of, Bureau of Investigation who looks into the various cases in India. So why the government of India constitute such you know uh, such you know autonomous bodies or such you know uh, legal institutions uh, or such you know agencies or such you know public enforcement agencies? So to maintain the social order, we need certain agencies. Uh, uh, to, to control this control the society as well as the economic affairs. So, so please understand that also law becomes very important also. So I will discuss whatever the relevant. The purpose of law is to provide peace, protection, and security to people and to ensure conditions for their all around development. It can be global development because development uh, with development there comes progress and growth. Law, social control, social order, social uh, law acts an instrument of state, and these I think this data don't need to you, and I will just come to the other part. Little bit I will discuss that I will do a history of sociology. 
<coughs> so uh, I will be taking only two minutes to discuss history of sociology. Uh, if you compare sociology with others, other social sciences disciplines, it can be economics, it can be political science, it can be history, it can be philosophy. Sociology is considered as one of the younger discipline because uh, during you know 19th century, in 1839, there was a person called August Comte. He was a French philosopher. He introduced this world called called sociology in his book. The title of the book was a positive philosophy. He was a friend. He completed after, after the completion of engineering. He was very various social problems in the West. I'm sure that you are aware of industrial revolutions as well as French revolution in the West. Are considered a major revolution in Europe majorly. So August Comte was very much interested in understanding this the, the social disorder during 15th and 16th century. So therefore he was trying to understand uh, the the massive migration that happened in Europe during the 15th and 16th century or after no uh, 16th 17th century. Because if you look at the time period of industrial revolution, there is 1760 to 1840, but before industrial French, there were certain moments, Renaissance, earlier, Enlightenment. So during 15th and 16th century, we understand they were going on some kind of crisis in the West. They were going on some kind of economic crisis. They were going on, going on some kind of last days, you know, uh, struggles, which Karl Marx is talking about in Germany. So. All the sociological thinkers it can be August Kohn, Karl Marx, Max Weber, they all have discussed about some kind of uh, problem, some kind of conflict in the West. So these twin revolutions become the responsible factor for the emergence of sociology in the West. And these are the points that uh, one should call the philosophy of sociology also becomes important in economics also. Because modernity and, and the enlightenment period in the West post 15th century, sociology as a scientific discipline, the concept of logic and sociology, value neutrality, the political philosophy, philosophy of history, positive scientific, then humanitarianism, then evolutionism, then sociological imagination. So, so, so I don't want to discuss. I don't. I don't want to discuss. You know, because uh, might be you feel you know. That this is this belongs to sociology and why we should understand this. But please remember, sociology as a discipline becomes very important for the students of you know economics. The debate between natural and social sciences. So somewhere during 15th and 16th century, natural sciences were dominating the social sciences, philosophy, methodology. They were questioning the social sciences methodology also. They were questioning the nature of research that social sciences were conducting. So therefore, this period considered as a as a major muscle between social science and natural sciences. So geology before and after dust count, we can see in India also setting up you know, Republic, Aristotle, politics, Manu, Manu Smriti, early art, Shastra, and others. So these are the things which you should remember. If you look at economic social certain sociological thinkers, they have discussed about economy and religion. Economy and you know family, economy and and kinship, and all such perspective becomes important for you to understand the economic relations, the relationship of economy with other you know, uh, disciplines. Economic problem to interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary or multidisciplinary to multidisciplinary approach. Oh, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Now, 
only just in two minutes i'm going to wind up my session and i will discuss now i will go to the main topic right now please remember what is india basically india is somehow if you look at indian society it's extremely old clear and and highly diverse nation so according to according to the it has covered up more than period of civilization because at the one i was part of the civilization and from many immigrants came to india and many scholars came to india like people gupta fahi and rumi they came to india they discussed about indian context they they understood that india is highly highly diverse nation in fact one brothers came to india through its east india company in 1600 and after you know uh, in 1733 they with what is this act all about to so certain point post indian you know nationalist can be modernist and it started on 1858 so that was also one interesting thing to understand the indian indian history and also if you look at indian scholar p s gua and major racial elements in the in the population of india it can be integrated to protest white mongolite mediterranean western dati peoples or not aryans so there were different scholars they have discussed you know about india when they uh, when they when, when, when we are talking about multiculturalism so in lump sum india is a highly diverse nation we are calling india as multicultural multi religious multi lingual nation and also we are having a kind of you know great history and also if you look at Uh, uh history also so after you know when british came to india they also uh, uh they also they also you know framed certain policies for the development of india and if you look at british british policies so british started promoting its policies from 1857 to 1947 they started westernization so westernization started from 1757 to 1947 you can see economic reforms with reference to westernization also so with reference to indian culture there was one uh, kind of social problem a social you know issue that was caste or casteism in indian society after 16th century because there was no mention of caste before 16th century and uh, the first reference uh, uh, we can see with reference to portuguese you know scholars and the other thing is that there was a caste is a more second thing declining hold of the caste panchayat there should be no discrimination it refers to any in the caste panchayat also so after that what happened in india uh, this special marriage act came into existence on 1872 so about indian elements then lot of reforms movement by ramo samaj by raja ramo roy 1820 then arya samaj by dalit society 1875 then ramakrishna mission 1897 then industrialization phase started in india so earlier there was a different kind of you know industry there were more you know uh, indian based industries you know uh, britishers and there was deindustrialization in india that was a major 
factors in the decline of uh, for the decline of Indian economy and uh, Indian national movement that that is also considered one of the most important movement with reference to Indian history, culture, mythology, sorry, philosophy of India. It is what is called the changes in the Indian society and these changes also impact our Indian economy. The constitution of India, remember, when the constitution came to existence uh, on 1950, they were you know, we, 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 we can we, we can we can see the various democratic reforms in reference to agriculture, uh, rural economy, irrigation, infrastructure, or or or, or the rise of science and technology, green revolution, LPG policy during 1990, So also these all changes also contributes to the welfare of Indian economy. Then we talk about educational reforms also. And very social legislation. Then very other social legislation. Uh, the Dowry Provision Act of 1961, Act of 2005, and also the So, with reference to gender, so there should be gender equality because gender is a neutral term, and uh, gender means we either we are not talking about male or female. Gender means ideology that different people preach. It can be male or female. So, gender is not gender is social, cultural, psychological. It's not biological. So, biological is sex that is different. So, after 1950, we're talking about land reform in India. With reference to agriculture, reforms in rural area, the rise of science and technology, Mandal Commission 1980, uh, which gave you know preservation to uh, other backup classes, and uh, the time P. V. Narasimha Rao was the you know uh, the head of the uh, state, the social justice and environment ministry, uh, the government of India they formed it, so there was a kind of globalization already I discussed with globalization. Uh, with reference to LPG, uh, about technological revolution in India, modernization, the kind of you know uh, the rise in social mobility, the equality rights in India, the reservation for economically poor, international to strengthen the international relations, and uh, awareness of identity, the challenges to modernity. So please remember. All such factors contribute to the growth, progress, and development of Indian economy. So I think uh, uh, I think this is because because uh, time was very you know uh, because I was having I think I think time is over. Uh, you might be feeling you know bored right now because this is all in session and all through all in session I think the communication. Uh, not more effective. Actually, uh, there was some issues with the internet. Otherwise, uh, it was very wonderful okay, session. Yeah, I hope uh, students because, uh, have learned out of Pawan, uh, Yes, yes. No, you just I will I will, I will share with you the PPT. You just share with your students also because they will go through it. Yeah, because, I will definitely uh, do there that. Are, uh, there are many points, and I think uh, because this was online session, and uh, there were many points. Uh, Deep yeah, because uh, there are many some... points. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time is time is time is very important. Connectivity and... issue. There was uh, some connectivity issue. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> it was very wonderful. I I can uh, you know, uh, it was wonderful session and uh, we have learned a lot of things. Apart from economics, we learned about history and uh, the sociology of India. <laughs> and I was uh, very keen to know more about it, but uh, time. Uh, Time doesn't permit that. I just, because I just, I just, yeah, 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 very much right, very much right. <laughs> I just touched upon the the economic sociology, and I think whenever I will get time. Yeah, we will plan in future. Uh, 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 maybe economy. plan some physical sessions because uh, there is a the you know this uh, constraint of uh, connectivity. It always happens yeah, right, uh, right, 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 right. in online sessions. I'm also facing some problems with the connectivity. So I don't know uh, how okay. 
connected this was with the other students because uh, there i have some problems with the internet anyway it was a very insightful session and uh, i thank you for from this uh, you know on behalf of the department of economics for your valuable time and thank you so much and in future we'll be conducting such kind of sessions and uh, we'll surely invite you in this uh, uh, that uh, physical session also thank you so much sir okay thank you thank you